All right, so you're trying to learn Blender. You go to hit render on your scene. You want it to look like this, but instead it ends up looking more like this. There are multiple factors here, but one of the things you need to be doing is texturing like a professional. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at how professionals texture and then how we can do that in Blender. Let's look at three methods. Method number one is going about creating custom shaders and custom tools to assist you in your pipeline. This is something that large studios do like in the Spider-Verse. However, this is obviously not an option for us individual artists. So let's look at some other options that we may be able to use. Next up, method number two is hand painting everything. Now this is something that you'll see in large budget games such as World of Warcraft where they will hand paint all the textures. It gives it a cool, stylized, very timeless look. However, yet again, unless you're doing a smaller scene, this may not be the best option for an individual artist. So enter method number three, which we'll be using as our solution. And this comes courtesy of Game Dev Studios popularizing this method over the last few years. And it comes with things in terms of generators and automatic maps. So what does that mean? It means that the texturing software takes into account things like edges, materials, normers, and inclusion, and can use all those to mix things into the roughness map, into the base color, and really add story to your texture. Well, adding story to your texture is a large role in what differentiates a good texture from a bad texture. So how do we get this inside of Blender? Well, the good news is that apparently it's in development at Blender to add more of these within the material tree. But you probably click this video because you want a solution now. So let's look at three main types of generators that occur in Substance Painter that for the most part can get us most of these results in Blender. And we're gonna look at how to create each of those generators. And for those of you who stick around to the end of the video, I'll also be showing you where you can get some free materials and resources to help you do this stuff a bit easier. But for now, let's dive into method one. So method number one, when using a tool like Substance Painter with generative add-ons, it will take into position into account of some of the add-ons. So for example, in this bug, I want of the bottom to be more rough than the top in terms of color. If we go ahead and look at the mask that has been generated here, you can see that we're getting that gradation from the bottom to the top. This is going to be the simplest of the three, so let's dive into Blender and look at how we can recreate this. This makes for a great example for a positional generative map, because if this was a real life bottle, there would likely be dust and other grunge kind of collected down here where it is harder to clean. So let's look at how we can go about doing that. Let's go ahead, hit Shift A here, and we'll add a gradient texture. I'm gonna leave this to linear. And I have Node Wrangler nabs on, so if I hit Control T, that will go ahead and add a generated coordinate. Let's go ahead, drag this color off here, plug this into a color ramp with a factor, and then I'm gonna hit Control Shift T so I can see what I'm doing. I see that my gradient's coming from the wrong direction and it's a bit harsh. So I'm gonna go ahead, rotate the Y 90 degrees, and then I'm going to take this linear here and set this to B-spline and get us a more gradual fall off. Perfect. That's about how much grunge I kind of want to ride up the edge of the bottle here. But if we go ahead and switch back to render view and we plug this into our roughness and our transmission roughness, you can see that it's just giving us kind of a frosted glass fall off. And that's why oftentimes whenever you're using a generative map, it's a good idea to introduce textures or grunge textures into it. This is actually something that Substance does automatically on all of its additive generators. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a grunge map I have up here. I'll give you a free one at the end of the video, but for now, let's just kind of walk through this process. We're gonna go ahead, add a mix factor here, and we're gonna go down here to mix color. Great. We'll leave that plugged into the top. We'll plug this into the bottom. We need to make sure that our grunge map has some generated coordinates, so we'll plug that into the vector. And let's go ahead and see what we have. You can see that right now we're not able to see much with this kind of color drop down. So let's go ahead, change this to multiply. And now you can see that our texture is coming through. And if we turn this up, you can see that we're starting to get a bit more interest there. You can also play ahead with these object coordinates if you want, but I'm going to leave mine ungenerated for now. Perfect, let's switch back to this view and we'll go ahead and plug this into the roughness value. And then we'll also go ahead and plug this into the transmission roughness. And you can see that now we're starting to get some results. You can also go ahead and add additional color ramps to help control how much it affects these various areas. So by grabbing this one, 
and lowering the white value, you can see that it is not affecting it as much. And I start to get a more kind of natural fall off. Now, another thing you can do is go ahead and add kind of grunge maps over on top of everything. This is also something that I like to do. So generally what I'll do is I'll go ahead, add a generative layer or an automatically generated layer, and then I'll go ahead and add a texture on top of everything. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and add this right here. We'll take this node over. And what we're going to do is plug this into the top layer there. And we'll plug this into the bottom layer. We'll go ahead and add this right here. Let's see what this grunge map looks like. We can see that this is kind of giving us some scratches overall, which could help add to the realism. So let's go ahead and look at how this is mixing. You can see right now we're not seeing much with the multiply, and that's because in this case, we want to set this to screen. Now, if you don't know, screen will basically filter out all the black in your image and put it B on top of A. Multiply will take all the black of the image and keep it and put it on B to A. So let's go ahead and plug this back into the roughness here. And we'll plug this into the transmission roughness. Look at our final render and you can see that now we're starting to get a more realistic glass. Now, one thing you can also do is sometimes take these, plug it into a bump node, set this into the height and plug this into the normal. And this can also help add some realism at a much smaller number. So let's go ahead, do 0 0.015. And you can see that now we're starting to get some indentations in there. So by using this kind of gradient to drive our position, you can end up adding a lot of realism. Another great example of how to use this would be if you used moss growing up from the bottom of a tree, dust growing on the bottom of a dresser, or you can imagine some other scenarios as well. Next up, let's take a look at how we can use things like ambient inclusion and kind of curvature data in order to kind of better create a more realistic texture. So here you can see that I am using that to go ahead and insert some of those colors into the cracks here. You can see some of the generative ones I have here that are kind of detecting the cracks and inserting kind of that colored pattern there. If I go ahead and switch over here and turn that on and off, you can see how big of a difference that is making. Let's look at how we can achieve this in Blender. Okay, great. So for this example, we're going to be using this really detailed alligator skull. So let's go ahead and drag a material on it and look at how we can get some of that cavity information out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead here, switch to rendered view. And let's say that we wanna make this look like it's kind of a painted wood sculpture. So we'll go ahead here, switch this over to generated. And you can see that that's looking good. We got kind of our painted wooden alligator. Now let's add some paint wear based off of the cavity information. So it's actually quite simple. What you want to do is you want to grab your object, hold tab and switch over to vertex paint mode. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to paint and you're going to come down here to dirty vertex colors. Click that. Depending on the complexity of your geometry, it may take a while to load, but once it is done loading, you will see that option appear down here. And then once that's there, you can go ahead, click that up and begin adjusting the parameters. Here, what I really want to do is have just only the dirt visible. So by clicking dirt only, what it will do is kind of get rid of this wash across the whole thing and show me just the dirt. Great. And now I have that information. You can see how that's kind of appearing in the cracks and where that is saved is actually over here under your mesh data in the attributes tab. You can see we have that down here. So we'll go ahead and call upon that in our shader. So let's switch back over to object mode and I'm going to switch into rendered view so that I can see what I am doing better. And then I'm going to go ahead and just grab another material in the scene. I want to go ahead and do kind of wooden rough appearing underneath there. I'm just going to go ahead, drag that in there so I can quickly access it. Go ahead here. I'm going to search for wood rough. I'm also going to generate this mapping here and plug this in just to see what this is looking like. Great. I'm going to go ahead and pick a brighter wood there so that it stands out a bit more. Perfect. Now what I want to do is mix these two things based on that crevice data that I have. So we can call upon that in here with the attribute. So we'll go ahead, search, look for color attribute, click that. And you should click here and you'll see that attribute appear and you can name that whatever you want in that mesh data. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that for default now. But let's go ahead and look at what this color data is showing. You can show that we're starting to get kind of all this data in here. And let's go ahead and add a color ramp to this. And we can even crush this a bit and make that a bit more prominent. Perfect. So now you can see that where all those cracks are, we're starting to get a bit more black. Perfect.
Now what we want to do is go ahead and use a mix shader between these two. And then we will go ahead and plug this data into the factor here. And you can see that where all those cracks are, we're actually starting to get a uh, wear and tear away where the paint is kind of chipping away as it kind of gets weathered over time. We can go ahead and increase that if we want a bit. And then like before, we can actually go ahead and also just add some kind of various grunge on there as well to further kind of assist the effect. So just as a quick example here, you can see that I've taken a grunge map, plugged it into a color ramp, multiplied it over there, and you can see that now it's adding kind of additional wear and tear and peeling to our object. So that's one way you can go about accessing crevice data as well. Another way, although not as accurate, it will load quicker and be a bit simpler to implement is you can actually use the ambient inclusion node. So if you go ahead and see what our ambient inclusion is doing, you can see that it is naturally kind of getting all of those crevices. So we can go ahead, take that ambient inclusion color, drag a color ramp on it, crush that down, and you can see that it gives us a very similar result, though a bit speedier and a little less accurate. So we go ahead, plug this into the factor, and plug that in there. And you can see that that is also giving us kind of some wear and tear and even getting in things here, like on the armpit, where it would kind of naturally wear off over time from friction. Now, lastly, let's take a look at edge detection. This is kind of like the cavity detection, except this is more along sharp edges of the object. So if I go ahead here and click this, you can see that wherever there is a harsh edge, that the paint is kind of worn off. So this edge detection is actually pretty simple to get in Blender, so let's take a look at that. So here I have downloaded this mech file, and we're gonna be looking at how we can go ahead and add some edge wear here to wear off the paint and reveal the metal underneath. Now there are two ways you can go about achieving this. Let's go ahead, get rid of this so we can view this on our model directly. So first is if you pull up the geometry node, and you go ahead and take the pointiness value here and plug this into a color ramp factor, you can go ahead and plug this directly in and you'll be able to see that we're starting to get some of those edges based on kind of the pointiness there of the geometry. So this is one way you can go about doing it. Another way in a more common method is using the bevel node. So if we'll go ahead, grab the bevel node here, we'll plug this into a color ramp factor and plug that into here. You can see that we don't really get that great of data at first because it's kind of smeared all over the object and around the corner. So let's go ahead and refine this a bit. We'll go ahead here and we'll add a vector math. Plug that in here and change this to a dot product. And then what we're going to do is add another geometry node. And this time we are going to feed in the normals to the vectors and plug that into the factor. And now you can see that we get a much more refined option there. And this gets us kind of a much tighter node there. And then we can control the radius here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to something like 0.25. And you can see how that's starting to kind of get us some basic edge detection there. Perfect. Then what we can do is go ahead and if we want to grunge that up, you can technically plug it into the radius, but you can also go ahead and plug it in on a color mix node as well. So let's go ahead here, add a color node. Plug this into the top here and plug this into the bottom and see what this looks like. You can see now we're starting to get that color all over. So we can go ahead here, use this color as a factor and go ahead and switch these. And now you can see that we're only getting that data there on the bottom there. You can see that we're getting some stretch coordinates. So you can go ahead and plug a generated coordinates in there and that'll help get you a bit better results. And you can go ahead and crush that a bit more and get a few more of those edges. Perfect. Then what we can do is we can go ahead and plug this into a mixed shader. So if I go ahead and search here, I have a metal rusted. So I'll go ahead and use this as well plug this into the mapping node there. We'll go ahead, plug this into a mix shader. And then we can go ahead and plug our edge detect node in here, and then plug this in for our final result here. You can see how we're starting to get a lot of wear and tear on the 
edges there. And of course you can go ahead and play with a bit better UV mapping and kind of crushing this a bit more or expanding the radius if you like as well to further move out around there. And you can see how much this adds here by kind of adding that edge wear and tear. Now, of course, the best way to do this is to mix all of these methods with additional grunge maps to create a more lifelike texture that tells a story. So for example, you could add dirt to the bottom of the feet using the gradient texture you could add some dust into the cavities using the cavity map, and then you could use the edge wear to kind of show the paint wearing off and then add a kind of just general grunge map on top of everything. Now, if you'd like to learn more about textures, I recommend checking out this video I have here on Disney textures and kind of the secrets in breaking down a PBR texture. Definitely check that out if you want to learn more. And as I said, I have some free materials. I just added a new free material to my sample pack for crafty asset pack, which you can find in the description below. As usual, thank you for watching.